All right, Lady Ada, what is this? I got this kind of cool cable. It's a panel mount, HDMI, and USB-C, and I thought I'd test it. And since I'm testing my Metro RP2040 anyways, why not also test this cable because it uses both USB-C and DVI, which uses an HDMI connector. So... Oh, I have some stuff that uses... HDMI and USB-C. Yeah, so what's nice is that you could then panel mount this and then, you know, you have your... I thought it would be great for Raspberry Pi computers, yeah. actually, because you could you have USB-C power and then HDMI oh, yeah. to micro or mini or, you know, standard HDMI, and then we have the DVMI output, and then we see on the computer that the USB-C uh, works because it enumerated, so this cable's good. I'm going to get That's these cool. in the shop. Yeah, these are nice. I like the little... It's very compact. Yeah. And it has nice, nice long cables. Oh, right. Lady Ada, what is this? Okay. I've always wanted this my entire life. It's an equipment rack. Oh. Um, when I was in school, we had these little, like, carts for the Tektronix scopes. But, of course, those were, like, CRT scopes. Now we've got beautiful LCD scopes. Um, and, you know, in my smaller office, I had my scope here. Um, or it would be on my workbench. And, like, so it's all this is empty here. <laughs> Imagine a scope. But the thing is, is that what I don't just need a scope. I also need my... DC power supply and my electronic load because often I'm like debugging how much power something is taking or I want to like try different voltages. Um, so having all my test equipment on a rolling rack is really nice. So this is actually like a dental cart, yeah. but it's actually like the exact right height. And I like that there's a little shelf here. Yeah. And then I put um, like this little cable keeper um, okay. for my probes. And then there's a little drawer down here. I guess I could keep more okay. um, scope probes and contacts and stuff in here. Are you going to so, peel off that blue protective plastic on the bottom shelf, or are you going to leave it? I'm going to just leave it until the day I die. What? No, I'm going to, I peel it off everything else. I just, I just stuff You're it. You're going to peel that off eventually, though, right? Yeah, I just put that okay. there. You're not going to leave that forever. Yeah, and it's yeah. also rolling. So one nice thing is because this, I think this has HDMI output. It does. It does. It does. So we're going to, so I was looking at this. So I'm yeah. like, I'm like, guess what, everybody? I'll be able to do, um, yeah. oh, wait. Uh, I thought this one did. It has yeah, USB, it has video, it's VGA out. Yeah, so sorry. VGA yeah, I have a, I have an adapter that, that does that. Okay, great. No problem. Yeah, I got it. I think I did this before. Yeah, so we can have my scope oh, outside. Um, so when I do videos and desk of Lady I can show Yeah, I, I got VGA to, to HDMI. Anyways, I'll post a link because in case other people want to have a, a beautiful yeah. scope carriage. Yeah. It can't and get, you don't have little... to be a dentist to get one, do you? No, it's a little... Don't let anyone buy it. It's a little janky. But yeah. basically, it was like either two hundred dollars or like a thousand dollars. Yeah, something. this is good. It's sturdy. I mean, I hope you put it together. It's fine. Yeah, it's okay. fine. I like it's on wheels. Okay, cool. Cool. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? I'm testing out more stepper motor drivers. We did the um, A4988, and now I'm looking at the TMC22. Oh, nine, which is kind of a cool stepper motor. So I've already tested the step and direction mode, and that works like as expected. But there's also a UR input right here. And what you can do is um, by using a single resistor, you can turn this single pin UR into a dual pin UR. So I have it hooked up here to my Metro RP2040. And then I'm running this library called TMC stepper, which seems to be fairly popular. And basically it's just like the code that runs all these TMC trinamic driver chips and lets you do stuff like, this is kind of neat, you can set the current li uh, limiting, you can set the micro steps over UART um, and then some other things like spread cycle and, and PWM scale. And then you can set the velocity over the UART. So it's interesting is I'm not actually toggling the step pin here, I'm actually setting, um, incrementing, and then decrementing speed. So I'm starting at zero, and then I'm like stepping up to like, you know, whatever, 10,000 speed. I, I don't know exactly how many, like, what, maybe that means like steps per minute or something. I don't know, I gotta look that up. Um, and it works, and it's kind of neat because it means you can control a bunch of these steppers without even pulsing the step pin. So that would be really good for um, like a single board computer where you really don't have fast GPIO access, or maybe you you know you don't have you don't want to continually have to have a timer go off um, to step the stepper motor. So uh, at the same time, I'm also checking the current limiting um, on my scope, and then the index pulses, which tell me um, how fast it's going around. So I can see you know as I change the micro steps, 
is it actually, what micro steps is it actually doing? So, so far so good. Actually, this board's pretty much ready to go. I think I'm, I just had to tweak one thing, the potentiometer, I want it to be higher current clockwise, not counterclockwise. So I flipped that. Um, but otherwise this is pretty much good to go. I'm gonna book this up. So uh, yet another cool stepper motor driver from Adafruit. Oh, right, Lee Data, what is this? Okay, I'm doing my final test on the Metro RP2350. So I fixed the chip pin orientation, so now they're all going the right way. And I relayed out the board, and now I'm testing everything, and thankfully, pretty much everything is working. I had one component that was the wrong value. I just hand-fixed it. I tested the micro SD, the debug, the PSRAM is working, all the GPIO, and there's an HSTX port. So connecting that to my DBI, and we can have some festive holiday turtle. And then here's the REPL. Let me restart it, and you can see us, and then Hello. in a few seconds. It's a beautiful Christmas tree. So this is the turtle program running with DVI output, um, 640 by 480 pixel doubled uh, color display, little star on top. So now I know the DVI works, all the pins work. This board is ready to order and it's going to be in the shop. We'll see. All right, Lady Data, what is this? I got this kind of cool cable. It's a panel mount, HDMI, and USB-C. And I thought I'd test it. And since I'm testing my... Metro RP2040 anyways, why not also test this cable because it uses both USB-C and DVI, which uses an HDMI connector. So... Oh, I have some stuff that uses HDMI and USB-C. Yeah, so what's nice is that you could then panel mount this and then, you know, you have your... I thought it'd be great for Raspberry Pi computers, yeah. actually, because you could you have USB-C power and then HDMI oh, yeah. to micro or mini or, you know, standard HDMI, and then you have the... DVM the output, and then we see on the computer that the USB-C uh, works because it enumerated. So this cable's good. I'm gonna get it's these cool. in the shop. Yeah, these are nice. I like the little, it's very compact. Yeah. And it has nice. nice long cables. All right, Lady Data, what is this? This is in rainbows. Uh, we're doing a demo with this cool 16 by 60 NeoPixel square. It's a great way for me to test my WLED board Yeah. over here. Um, which I got today. Um, only made one mistake. I had the wrong resistor for the 3.3 volt regulator, but uh, that was easy to fix. Um, so some cool things, gigantic five amp, 24 volt fuse, buck converter from 24 down to uh, three volts. So you have a good three volt power supply. Inf infrared uh, PD, which you have to test. So USB-C PD can give you five, 12 or 20 volts. Um, diode, so you can have either USB or DC input. I squared C, um, pin 27 on like a little power ground input, reset and a boot button and also like a user button. Um, and then some extra GPIO on here. And then here's the three outputs. There's also a fourth output available on here um, that's level shifted, USB serial converter, ESP32. And so I've loaded um, WLED on it and just testing it out. So far, you know, I was able to program it. Um, I've tested all the outputs and this one works. I love the terminal blocks. It makes it really easy. And um, then I just set this up as a matrix and it's glowing. So next I'm gonna test the IR on um, all the IO pins and the button, but um, I've tested about half of it so far. So, so far so good. Okay, the names that we're thinking of, if you've watched the video this far, is sparkle motion and uh, maybe in rainbows, but you know, naming. So why don't you put your ideas for this WLED board name in the comments? And uh, if we pick yours, we'll send you an award. Yeah. But um, you know, we, have to, we have to make sure that oh, it's okay. Oh, and this is it. this is from Silicon Squared. It's the sparklet. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, I think I either got a sample or a gift of that. I actually don't quite remember where I got this. I found it in my NeoPixel bin. Cool. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Okay, so we just did the demo with the teeny rainbows, and now I'm testing out the what I call the sparkle motion board with big rainbows. Yeah. So this is LED netting, which is another sample we're testing. We're going to stock um, this LED pebble netting. Um, so this is a uh, yeah, 60 me, by Lady 60. Ada for scale here. Yeah, this is big. This is 60 by 60 LEDs. Um, so what's cool is, you know, each one of these nettings is 1200 LEDs 
And um, WLED doesn't support more than 2,000 LEDs per output, but because there's three outputs, this is testing all three outputs. And then I've created, you know, three, they've said the three strands and then turn them into one grid so you can kind of have like one big display. Um, so you might use this for like a holiday display as well, but also a great test. Another interesting thing is these are 12 volt. And so this is a good test of powering um, the pixels through the DC jack with a 12 volt, five amp power supply. It's not a very high power supply, but it's just to kind of get us going. And then I can always um, get more power if needed. And um, so far so good. So I'm learning a little bit about WLED, but I wanted to like do the little demo and then a 12 volt, you Big know, 3000 pixel, sorry, 3600 pixel demo. And um, it works great and, you know, super fast. I think it'll be really cool. Yeah, cool. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Okay, I'm playing with my LED board, codenamed Sparkle Motion, um, and I got WLED running on it. And then I was like, well, I want to play an animated GIF because I want to do like some holiday themed stuff. And I realized it's actually really hard to play an animated GIF um, through WLED. You can do it, but it's like a little gnarly. And so what I realized when looking around is everyone's like, oh, just use X Lights. Um, so I've downloaded X Lights, which is like, Kind of amazing. We don't make software like this anymore, guys. <laughs> um, so what's cool is that you have to set up the controller, which I did over here. So I set up, um, it's called Ethernet, but it's actually just like internet. Um, TCP IP, it's a generic ESP32. I give it the IP address, I set up the protocol, and then I do the layout. So I set up a grid here. I, you know, I created like a generic Grid, you tell it how many strands and does it zigzag and da da da, and then you can lay out multiple grids. You tie it together, and then there's the sequencer. And so the sequencer down here, like I have two layers. One is a photo, which is the GIF, and then one is um, fireworks. And so what you see in the end is an animated GIF playing, and then you, and I added sparkles as another effect, and then you see this. Um, cool fireworks, you can pick what colors you want. So like yeah. X-Lights is incredibly powerful. Um, I think one of the issues I see is there's either like beginners using WLED or like psychotic, <laughs> unbelievably cool, huge Christmas displays. And there's kind of nothing in between. So I thought maybe it would be cool if I showed how to do like basic setups yeah. with WLED, like a lot of projects could want to do. It's actually not that bad once you learn how to use um, X-Lights. It's just like the learning curve is a little high, but once you get your layout and your controller set, then you just, you just click the, you know, send to lights. Yeah. And another thing I really like is this um, model virtualizer. Yeah. So, you, you know, it'll show you what um, is displaying. So you can like mess with stuff. And then when you're ready, you can like export it. You can run it off of a Raspberry Pi too, if you don't want to use your computer. And of course, there's like audio synchronization and like trillions of effects and user mods. Anyways, cool stuff. Um, WLED and X Lights is an excellent pairing. All right, what's this? Um, I also had a request from somebody who wanted to control a lot of uh, solenoids, and I was like, oh yeah, we don't have a board that does that. So this is a I squared C GPO expander that gives you eight solenoid control with like individual transistors and uh, switchback um, diodes. And uh, you can use um, any MCP 23017 library and has like power input terminal blocks. So it's plug and play. It's like a really solder, nice solderless way to do um, a uh, uh, multi eight solenoids and eight GPIO at the same time. And then this is the board that we're working on. This is, we're calling it Sparkle Motion or In Rainbows. In Sparkle Motion. Oh, yeah. Rainbows. Oh, yeah. I yeah. question your commitment to Sparkle Motion, Rose. Well, I'm. then why are you calling it In Rainbows? Well, that was just another name that came up. Okay. Anyways, no, I kind of, I kind of looked around and tried to Sparkle Motion. Yeah. Motion. It's yeah. um, coming soon, but you can sign up if you want. Yeah, we have a sign up page. To be notified once in the store. Yeah. Start. All right. It might change a little bit, but not much. It's actually like pretty good. All I right. like that it's small. It's a very compact WLED board. And just because this is kind of a question, but whatever, we'll still do it. Um, it, it someone says, is it too late for a um, microphone? There's a microphone on board. There you go. There's an I2S mic on board, yeah. There you go. Glad to see extra. GPO pins either way, though. Retired wizard, you got it. You asked where you got it. It's that simple. Okay, yeah. that. 
is our gigantic coming soon section. So big. <laughs>